how to be free you too can be free provided you break the chains which has been put into your hearts <laughs> and in our system we have this blocking system from here the chains break open chains and then you boo and you say whoosh <laughs> carbon dioxide is out fresh oxygen you are free this is the 29th story from the zen flesh zen bones written by paul rebs no water no moon and i just loved this one beautiful story in my throughout my whole life <laughs> Mm. Every time I see the story, it enlightens me. And if you know how to crack the cone, it's difficult to crack the cone. Once you know to crack the cone, wow, it is beautiful. <laughs> the total world is under your control. Such is the beauty of this story. Listen, when the nun Chiano studied Zen under Book of Engaku. She was unable to attain the fruits of meditation for a long time. At last, one moonlit night, she was carrying water in an old pail bound with bamboo. The bamboo broke and the bottom fell out of the pail. And at that moment, Chiana was set free. <laughs> in commemoration, she wrote a poem in this way and that I tried to save the old pail. Since the bamboo strip was weakening and about to break until at last the bottom fell out. No more water in the pail, no more moon in the water. Such was the beauty of a poem also written by Chian. When the nun Chiano studied Zen under the book of Enka, of course, she was unable to attain the fruits of meditation for a long time. As long as you try to follow, follows our unconscious state. Every follower must understand that you should be conscious like the Zen master, the student went and challenged the Zen master. Twelve years I am with you. And you have not taught me anything. You are misused to me. You made me to cook food, wash your clothes, clean the kitchen, clean the toilets. And all your students, when they come, guests come, I have to serve them food. Twelve years passed. I have to leave you. The master said, oh, is that so? All those monkeys who came, they took certificates and they went, have you watched me walking? I never walked, I was floating. When you gave me a cup of coffee, have you ever washed? I never took it from you. I just allowed it to melt into my hand. And when I drank that coffee, you were not conscious that I and you drank together. I always never drink alone. When you gave me the coffee and I drank, I melted with you also. Hearing that, the student was enlightened. Till then he was not conscious. Watching is very important. So Chiana was not able to watch like any other student because they were not conscious. They were always worried about what master is doing for others. You have come here for the master. Your focus is on the master, on your subject. Because you know, when you put one seed properly in a fertile soil, it can grow to become a beautiful tree, provided you water and fence it up. But instead of keeping the seed in the hand and watching which all seed master is giving to others, that chanchala, that disturbance of the mind, like Chiano was not able to get the fruits of what she was trying to do. At last one moonlit night, she was carrying water in an old pail bound with bamboo. That is just a bamboo, old pail, old pot 
mud pot, she's carrying it up. And every time she's carrying the water, she sees the moon in the water. She thinks the moon belongs to me. The moon is mine. So she makes sure that she carries it up, the mud pot as well as the moon. This is the greed. This is the attachment that the mud pot is the ashram, is the Rakam school. And the moon is the Guruji. These two belong to me. I will not share it to anybody. But they do not know the master is there up in the sky like the moon. You cannot possess it. The moment you possess, you become logical from your mind. That's why they say speak from the heart. She was holding it. Holding the master. Not allowing anybody else to come near to the master. She was possessive. By not allowing anybody to come near the master, she forgot to practice herself. She was possessive. That was the connecting link. That the pot is the money in the bank, your dresses, your relatives, your friends, your degrees, all are the pot. And the moonlit is your religion, is your caste, is your master. You are possessive. The day you leave your possessiveness, you are <coughs> free. But no university, no school has allowed you to be free. They tell you everything what you learn, keep it, keep it. <laughs> and you were frightened that what you learned, you will forget. When I was coming out of my house, I'm going for an examination. One of the lecturers of the engineering college who was staying in our lodge, we don't call it hotel, we have lodges given for rent. So this lecturer saw me and asked, what is it? I said, oh, today is my examination. He said, okay. All the best with the examination, but make sure, don't shake your head. I did not understand. I said, what? He said, all what you studied will fall off. <laughs> I laughed. So you are trying to be possessive. And the moment Chiano was carrying the pot and the bamboo strip was so weak, it broke off the bottom of the pot. The water leaked out. She couldn't see the moon and not the water. It just went off. At that time, she said, oh, that's all. <laughs> I was possessive. She became enlightened. In commemoration, she wrote a poem in this way and that I tried to save the old pail. Since the bamboo strip was weakening and about to break until at last the bottom fell out. She wrote a poem, and in that poem she wrote, in this way and that way, but in this way also I did not leave, that way also I did not leave. Anywhere, whether it is good or bad, whether I want food or not, but I never give up. We have studied that, the dog and the hay. Even if the dog doesn't want to eat the hay, it don't allow the cow to eat the hay. Like that, my mind was like this way and that way. No way. I will not what I got it, whether I want this dress or not. Mother Teresa used to say, use only three clothes, one to use, one to wash, one to dry. Not more than that you keep in the cupboard. Use it. All others, you should, the moment you keep more than three, this way and that way, you become possessive. And in that possessiveness, you become sick, disease, mentally retarded, and for your questions you don't find answers. You try to run here and there to become a slave, more slave. One time somebody went and told the master, Master, my marriage is fixed, please come for the wedding. And the master looked at him and said, stupid idiot, you already married three times, this is the fourth time. No shame for you. He said, no, sir. Three times all these girls are dirty girls. So I divorced them. This is the fourth girl I'm going to get. All women are dirty. Master said, yes, I know that all women are dirty. 
Don't marry. Then why are you marrying? You all women are dirty. No, this girl will be very nice. So master said, no, no, no. Girls are not dirty. It is you who is dirty. You are jumping from one person to another by killing a person, by killing two more people and jumping to a much stronger jail. Do you think you have removed your criminal activity? You need changes, not the girl. What's the guarantee that the fourth girl also you will not divorce? So it is not the problem with the society. It's a problem with you. You need the change. So this way and that way. Since a bamboo strip was weakening and about to break until at last the bottom fell out. No more water in the pail, no more moon in the water. Suddenly the bottom fell out. She got, she felt, I have to leave the possessiveness. Only three dresses, not more than that. All others distribute as fast as possible because even these three will be taken by somebody. What was the success of your 65 years? 65 years of your wedding anniversary in America, it is something great. In India, it is not very great. In America, by the time you go for honeymoon and come back, your divorce happens. Like the Narita divorce happenings in Japan. They go for honeymoon, come back, Narita airport, divorce. <laughs> very fast. 65 years together. All the media people went and asked, what is the success? And the grannies told, there is no success. Nowadays, if anything tears, if my dress is torn, nowadays these girls, they throw it out and they buy a new one. In our time, we, kept, we keep on stitching the dress. <laughs> we never throw it out. Whatever problem between husband and wife, she stitches it back it seems. Stitching back is the most beautiful part. When you know to stitch back, you know the beauty of it, yes. Stitching is very, very important. And when you know to stitch and use the same dress again, again to the last drop, you can find more beauty on the dress. Otherwise, you will never see beauty. You are seeing beauty through the advertisement and you get allowed the mind to be carried away by the advertisement. Remote control you. Unnecessary possessing is very, very bad. This is possessing your dress. You try to stitch and uh, stitch and stitch. You know, the more juice comes out of that cloth and first time you understand, oh, the cloth and its value. You will not allow the mind to get distracted.